Alrighty. <clears throat> there we go. Let's get things situated and move this stupid cord. <sighs> ah. Alright. Dial this down a little bit. I'm gonna push this up a trifle. Okay. Okay, cool. Good, good, good. <coughs> Dang it. I've got a little fleck of Triscuit stuck in my throat. God. <clears throat> I'm gonna get that out of the way before I actually start because holy hell, that's gonna get annoying. <clears throat> <clears throat> Damn. Okay. I think I've cleared it out. Oh, goodness. Okay, well, uh, today, <clears throat> sort of going kind of between projects, so I'm doing something a little different. And I imagine some of you are like, well, what is Ultima? What, what is this, what is this thing that D Magnus has been making weapons from and whatever? Well, Today is when you'll find out what Ultima is, exactly, because I'm going to be playing Ultima 6, The False Prophet, and I'm sure you're also wondering, why am I starting with Ultima 6? What about Ultima 1? Well, that's a bit, uh, <laughs> it's a bit interesting, because Ultima 1 is extremely old, like 1980s or so, and that besides, Ultima 6 was the first Ultima game I ever played, so it's probably the closest one to my heart, and the one I'm most familiar with. If, if it interests anyone, I could, after we do Ultima 6 here, I could go back and show you guys, like, Ultima 5, 4, 3, 2, and maybe 1, I don't know. Uh, so, but for today, we're gonna be doing Ultima 6, and... I imagine, like, uh, next Saturday I'll probably be doing, starting a new model, but this playthrough of Ultima 6, I'll probably, I'll have to figure out what day I'm going to be doing it. I was thinking, like, maybe Friday evenings or something like that, but for today we'll get this, get old Ultima 6 started up. So, let me <clears throat> get this party started. Where is it? And 
I'm hoping that this doesn't screw up. So I'm gonna a real hot switch here. There we go. Hopefully that's not too loud. I'm gonna dial this down a little bit. All right. Okay, well, that was the intro to Ultima 6, so. Let's uh, get a new character going here. Oh, oh boy, now I have to think of a name. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, one of the games. Uh, the Ultima series is lengthy. The Ultima 6 is just one of the... There's nine games in the Ultima series. Technically ten if you count Ultima Zero, which is otherwise known as a Kalabeth. But I don't think there's really any specific uh, items from Ultima 6 that are in the mod. So, but... <clears throat> Anyway, so, now I just need to think of what kind of goofy name I'm going to give this poor sod that we'll be adventuring with today, and onward. Uh, let's see. I'm debating if I could, I could either be serious or silly here. Hmm. Uh, after this point, it's going to be a lot quicker. Oh, let me think. Uh, how about the... Adventures of Kevin? <laughs> or... I'm trying to think of a really lame name, like... It's like someone like really unassuming. Like, what's the like most unassuming name, like... 
you think the name, you, you hear the name and you think, oh, that guy's like an accountant or something really boring, like he counts toothpicks for a living. That would be a crappy job counting toothpicks. <laughs> anyway. Uh Shush. A, don't want that distract getting in the way. Uh let me think. I'm gonna be doing that a lot, aren't I? <laughs> Let's just, I guess, just Bill. Maybe let's let's do Bill. Uh, nail. <laughs> just build the build the advent build the master of something, and we just need to find someone suitable for this guy. Eh, this guy looks suitably lame, so I guess we'll go for him. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I could probably just type A and B. Okay, so thy parents wish thee to become an apprentice. Two positions are available. Dost thou A, become an acolyte in a worthy spiritual order, or B, become an assistant to a humble village cobbler? Well, Considering this guy's supposed to be, like, the lamest of the lame, I'm thinking, uh, he'll be a <laughs> village cobbler. So, pour that into the into the vial. <clears throat> Thou hast sworn to do thy lord's bidding in all. Ugh, that's... <laughs> Thou hast sworn to do thy lord's bidding in all. He covets a piece of land and orders its owner removed. Dost thou, A, serve justice, refusing to act? Thus being disgraced, or B, honor thine oath and evict the landowner. Hmm. Um, feeling Bill's like a yes man, so we'll go with A. Let's pour that in there. Thou dost manage to disarm thy mortal enemy in a duel, he is at thy mercy. Thus thou A, show compassion by permitting him to yield, or B, slay him as expected of a valiant duelist. Hmm. Bill's lame, so A. <laughs> He's like, nah. Thee and thy friend are valiant but penniless warriors. Thou both sent forth to slay a mighty dragon. Thy friend does think he slew it, but the killing blow was thine. Dost thou A, honestly claim the reward, or B, sacrifice the goal for the sake of thy friendship? Um... We'll go for B, considering. Also B for Bill. <laughs> At witness, unwitness, thou hast slain a mighty dragon in defense of thy life. A poor warrior claims the offered reward. Dost thou A, justly step forward to claim the bounty, of, claim the bounty or B, humbly go about thy life? Secure in thy self-esteem. This is all. This is not all that much different from the previous question, <laughs> honestly. Um, only slightly different, really. Um, and B. Thee and thy friends hath been routed and ordered to retreat. In defiance of thy orders, thou shalt A, stop in compassion to aid a wounded comrade, or B, sacrifice thyself to slow the pursuing enemy so that others might escape. Hmm, 
Bill's kind of interested in staying alive, so he's going to help a wounded fellow. Boop. The captain of the King's Guard asks that one among thee visit a hospital to cheer the children with tales of valiant personal deeds. Thus thou A, show thy compassion and play the braggart, or B, humbly let another go. Um... Uh, he's got to have a little bit of interest. You know, talk about how it, all his uh, exciting adventures picking up toothpicks. The path of the Avatar lies beneath thy feet, worthy Bill. <laughs> the gypsy intones. With a mysterious smile, she passes you the flask of shimmering liquids. Drink of these waters and go forth among our people who shall receive thee in joy. Quick. Oh, in here. Oh boy. <laughs> As you drink from the flask, vertigo overwhelms you. A soothing mist obscures the gypsy's face, and you sink without fear into an untroubled sleep. And the screen goes to Cyan. You wake in a different time upon a different world's shore. Though the Avatar's quests bring you to both triumph and tragedy, never do you stray from the path of the Eight Virtues. The sagas of Ultima IV and Ultima V chronicle your peril perilous travels and your name and your deeds are written forever among Britannia's legends. Finally, tempered by your struggles against the enemies of virtue, you are proven ready to answer the epic challenge of Ultima VI. And we're right into the thick of things! <laughs> uh... I'm not sure why it skipped over the... Because it kind of skipped over something kind of important. I don't know why it hasn't... Why it didn't do that, but... Well, let's get these gargoyles. Oh. Uh... Kinda gotta get into range here, just so I can punch him in the face. Stop trying to axe me over there, I see you! Don't know why it's... Well, at least I have a sword. I have to gotta get around to that ding dong. Wait, okay, well that works. Uh, okay. So there, that's Shimino's inventory. There I am with my stupid cloak. Uh, alright, I'm gonna pick up some of these axes. Oh man, there's a lot of them. Okay. <laughs> How many axes did you guys have in your assholes? Good lord. Where the heck are you even keeping these things, guys? Good. Oh my god. Jeez, I think you have enough axes? I should give some of them to my friends. Good lord. Okay, um. Yeah, I'm gonna drag some of these out. Eh. I could probably sheath my sword now. Since they're all dead. Uh, okay, I think that's enough axes. Here, Dupre, you can have some. Do, do, do. And. Shimino, you can just have. You can have one. Oh, nope. You can have two. There you go. Good boy. Um... And more axes. Like, I need more! I've got enough! Good lord. Well, maybe, Shimino, you can have a third one. Here you go. Dupre, uh... Durr. I'm gonna take that banana ring. I'll leave the club. What do you got? Uh, another banana ring, another axe, another club. Fabulous. Um, would you ding-dongs move it so I can see what I'm... Ah, there we go. Okay, wow, this guy's... Jeez, where are they keeping these axes? I swear. Okay, well, let's talk to Lord British here. Yakety yak. You see the noble ruler of Britannia. Bill, tis good to see thee again. Much has passed... Much has happened since thou last departed our realm. God, that's awkward to say. But I must make sure it's tis truly thee. Only the true Avatar would know what it, what was contained in the compendium I sent. Oh god. What valued item canst one find near the spawning grounds of uh, Idras? Yeah, this is... Now I'm gonna have to open the manual. As these games... The games of... The games in the 90s and all that. Instead of all your Denuvo anti-tamper and 
fancy DRM. They had this copy protection stuff. In Ultima, it was just like, you know, answer me these questions three or whatever, like, you know, like what Lord British is asking here. But, you know, some other games had some really esoteric copy protection things. Like, I think one had, like, a freaking code wheel of all things that you had to, like, reference and all that. So now I just need to find this compendium. Ah, here we go. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, that's Hydra's, not Adris. It, dang, the H blends into the A, so it looks like... Uh, okay, well. Uh, Nightshade, okay. Is that acceptable? Thou are correct. How doth a sea serpent attack? Well, I kind of know this. Fire? That is correct. What doth troll lack? What doth trolls lack? Uh, brains. No, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's right. Uh. <laughs> no, I don't think that's right either. Uh, what is the right answer? Ah, okay. Ah, tis thee indeed, Bill! Take this key! It will unlock the gatehouse by the southern entrance to the castle. Then you can use the lever inside to raise the portcullis and the crank will lower the drawbridge. The same key will also let you into the sewers under the castle. Oh boy. Now let me tell thee what hath happened, trans what, uh, what hath transpired since thy last visit. The vast underworld from which thou didst rescue me hath collapsed. Beautiful. Yet still there are forces of evil abroad in the land. Britannia is under attack by gargoyles such as those thou just fought. They have been coming up through the dungeons. Thus far they have mainly been attacking the Shrines of the Eight Virtues. When the Shrine of Compassion didst fall, Sir Joffrey sent a party to free it. Sent, sent a party to free it. Do thou ask him of this mission? Do... What? Okay, that's a little bit awkward language there, Lord British. Do thou ask him of this mission? Ugh. Perhaps thou canst, pro uh, canst prove of some assistance. While start here, I have a room in the castle set aside for thy personal use. Tis in the west wing of the castle, or just south of mine own chambers. I have had my servants place some equipment there in case thou shouldst have need of it. I will have need of it, because I've just got a sword, a necklace, and the orb of the moons. Of course, thou mayst feel free to borrow anything in my castle if thou shouldst need it. Lastly, anytime thou dost need healing, do thou but ask me. It kind of throws thou's everywhere, when it, whether or not it makes sense, like uh, in that previous phrase. If thou wish me to repeat all this later, thou need but ask. Um, my shrines. By now the gargoyles may have captured them all. Great. Thou must hurry if thou wouldst foiled at evil schemes. And what was the other thing he was talking about? Virtues, yes. Stay strong in thy commitment to the eight virtues. It is our belief in them that sets us apart from the cruel invaders who would destroy all that we hold dear. And I think I could... Uh, nope. Can I use... Yeah, I can scroll up. Good. So I can see what the heck he was saying. Uh, Virtue Shrines. Let's talk about... Let's ask him about Joffrey. Not Game of Thrones, Joffrey. This guy's actually not a dick. Nope. That's not how he's... That's how you spell Joffrey? Dang it, no. That's more like... Joffrey. <laughs> Joffrey, okay. Let's just go and find Joffrey while we're at it. Okay, well, how do you actually spell that thing? Is his name? Okay, Geo. Like in Geography. He is the captain of the guard. Great, okay. Beautiful. Thanks. Tis I who should thank the Avatar for all... Oh, well, I was expect unexpected. Bye. May fortune favor thee. Okay, now we can actually mill around. Um... Is this Dingball? That's a fighter. I'm glad to see thee, Bill. Perhaps thou canst prevail where others could not. I sent a party of ten to recapture the Shrine of Compassion from the Gargoyles. Alas, they failed dismally. Well, geez, maybe you should have picked more than just, like, dudes with sticks. 
The survivors are recuperating in the town of Cove. Okay, well, that's a place we should go at some point. Though it's do well to speak with them first. Mayhap they learn something which might aid thee. I must confess, they fear the worst. The gargoyles are such powerful foes, and they are spreading so fast. Well, I mean, they're probably rabbits. Perhaps the end of the uh, and perhaps the end of the realm is nigh. Eh. Good luck, and may my prayers go with thee. All right, I've got a key and my sword, my one sword. I'm gonna give myself a banana ring. There we go. So at least I've got something. Uh, oh, and talk to the wizard. Hi, mage. You see a concerned-looking mage. Hail to thee, my lord, and well met. Twas I who learned of thy peril through my mystic arts, so that a uh, so that aid might be sent unto thee. Yeah, and we. The game kind of skipped over that. Thanks. Oh god. <sighs> Yolo, I saw that thou didst find a book. Might I examine it? Certainly, my lord. Perhaps thou canst make better sense of it than I, says Yolo. And yes, his name is pronounced Yolo, which is unfortunate in this day and age. I've always said it as Eolo, but I later found out from... I later found out that it's actually pronounced YOLO, like, the I is a Y. Which kind of makes it funny nowadays with YOLO being you only live once. Like, Y-O-L-O -O instead of I-O-L-O, -O, but... Jokes abound on that. <clears throat> Strange. This, ha this has a picture on it, on its cover, of a gargoyle standing with one foot on the chest of a slain human. This is interesting. It is written in a language I know not. Take it to Mariah the Lyceum, uh, Lyceum, the finest scribe on the Great Council of Wizards. One more thing. Oh. Avatar, oh, thanks for that dramatic pause. I noticed that thou, thou didst arrive through a red gateway. Thou, dost thou have the stone that opened the gate? From whence could it have come? Perhaps the, gar uh, the gargoyles, perhaps? Best ask, best ask Lord British about it. I believe he has some knowledge of some such items. Ugh. Now let's talk to LB here. Good morning, Bill. What wouldst thou speak of? Uh, stone. You show Lord British the black stone. Hmm. I have such a stone as thou may recall. I did not know where that... What that there were I did not know that there were more such orbs. It will serve thee well in thy travels if thou dost learn to master its powers. To open a gate, use the stone and carefully position it a few feet from thee. Thou wilt discover that the placement is the key. In the proper positions, the stone can conjure gates to take thee to numerous destinations. Hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, may fortune favor thee. Okay, yeah, thanks. Okay, well, now that we've... I think we've exhausted everything we can here, and then there's these chuckle heads over there. So, uh, let's run into a pillar and then open a door. Uh, I think this is Lord British's room. Look in the mirror. You can see yourself looking smarmy and... Heh. <laughs> And there's a chest. That's Lord British's nonsense, though. I'm not gonna go rooting through his stuff. Oh, wait, open the door. Ah, need this. Yoink! Spellbook. Alright, what do we got in here? And reagents. Very nice. I'm actually gonna take this whole dang bag. Rather than, like, just, you know, pull everything individually out of that. So I'd like to note that I'm running Ultima 6 through Nuvi, which is, um, it's a standalone engine specifically designed to run Ultima 6 and its derivatives, and it's using some Ultima 7 style uh, control schemes. In the original Ultima 6, if I double click on this chest, for example, it'll just dump everything out on top of it. So, you know, I'd open it up and you'd get, like, all this heaped up on top of that one chest. Which would make things awkward, but chain quaff, chain boots, I mean leather boots, a shield, can't go wrong with that. Five lock picks, not bad. What's in this? <clears throat> oh, more reagents. I'm just gonna shove all those into my reagent bag here. 
Do. 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 Mm -hmm. So I imagine you're probably wondering just what the heck is are these doodads used for? These are necessary for casting spells. I'm gonna take that bag so I can... Actually, I'm gonna reopen it. I'm gonna shove all these axes into it. If I can. Can I? Oh, yep, there we go. Yep. I'm gonna throw all them axes in there so I don't clutter up my inventory with these stupid axes. <laughs> Be nice if they stacked. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers. And a potion. I said, and a potion. Thank you. Um, I'm probably gonna give the torches. Mm. Dupre, what do you have in your sack? Um, 30 gold and whatever the crap that is. Onions? Oh, gold nuggets, okay. <laughs> right, okay, well, fine. Here, you can you can be the chicken holder. To pray, and also the booze holder. Get your oh, that's ale. Yeah, so you can hold on to the ale and the chicken. And I wonder if I can. Whoops, that closed it. Great, thanks. I had to go back to my inventory. Uh, that's my axe bag. Open the bag. Oh. Uh, okay. Whoops. <laughs> I want to see my inventory, please. Thank you. Okay, that's my axes. Let's just jump out of there. That's those. Uh, open the chest. Thank you. Um. Yeah. Well, I'll take the torches and the bread, I guess. There we go. Well, actually, maybe I could give the bread to Yolo. I'm going to dump it on the floor. <laughs> Six. Dump it all on the floor. Shimino, YOLO, here we go. Here you go, YOLO, you can take my bread. Actually, you've got an awful lot of stuff. You're getting pretty close to being piled up. I think I'll give the bread to Shimino. Oh, okay, there. For a moment there, I thought, where's the bread? Did he eat it? <laughs> Better not have. And you can take the chest, Shimino. Probably need that for containing mad swag. What's in this? Uh, clothes of some description. Ready? I just readied some pants. Okay, I'm ready with pants. Where did I put my... I'm wearing the pants around my neck like a scarf. Come on, Bill. Good lord. That's not how you wear pants. You put them on your pants. Uh Put them on your legs, man. Come on. It's not... Jeez. Oh, that's locked. What's in this? Hubert's hair-raising adventure, written and illustrated by Bill Pete. Wow. Okay. Well, I guess we could say that Bill wrote this. Ha ha. Hubert and the Ryan. Uh. What? Hubert and the lion. Hubert the lion was haughty and vain, and especially proud of his elegant mane. But conceit of this sort is. Dang it. Come on. Ah, talk to, look at the book. But conceit of this sort is not proper at all, and Hubert the Lion was due for a fall. Elegant. Uh, I, well... There we go. What's in here? Death, apparently. Great. Now we're all poisoned. And all that for just chain shirts and stuff. I think that might be... I don't know if that's... No. Oh, you know what? Oh, I think that might be mispositioned or something. That's like a... I don't know what that is. Okay, that those are the ring slots right there. Okay. All right off the bat, we got wounded. Thanks. Trap in your freaking ch weapon chest. Ow. Dang it. Ah... ALB, could you heal me, please? Because I rooted your chest and <laughs> heal me. Yay. Cure? Eh, bye. Level XP 3, okay. 
Looks like we're okay. I think he cleared that poison off. Good. Just auto-sit in the chair there. <laughs> Alright. Oh. Okay, cool. Hey, buddy. You see a bare-chested, muscular man, his body gleaming with sweat. Oh, boy. Hi. Excuse me a moment. He pulls a napkin from his belt and mops at his brow. Now, what were you saying? Uh... Wait a minute. I recognize you. You're the Avatar! I've always wanted to meet you! You're the greatest hero in all the ra ra land! What the hell was I even saying? Thanks. When you should mention thanks, uh -huh. It reminds me of a sec my secret recipe for roast boar. Okay. The recipe is in the spices. It's an old family recipe. Oh, well, what is that recipe? Come on, man. Don't, don't bogart it. Oh, thanks. Okay, what? <laughs> Why does dick remind you of roast boar? Okay, thanks. Bye. I'm not talking to you anymore. Good lord. Jeez, God. Oh, boy. Okay, well, let's get the heck out of here. Now, and hello, Chuckles. You see a carefree fellow in ludicrous costume. Yeah. Ho oh, yo hee hum, I've got a clue! It's important and just for you! Oh god. Could you just outright say it instead of just being a ding dong? Yes, it's crucial to your quest. Do you want to know what it is? Uh. Yes. Perhaps I don't want to tell you. Do you think I will? No. Congratulations, you're exactly right. Right, I won't tell you the clue. But I will give you this hint that may lead you to it. Search the chest in Nystool's room. Uh, hint? If hints were mints and mints for hints, think what a world it would be. Are you sure you're not Sheogorath in disguise? Silly dink. Uh, chest? A quest, a chest, or oh, what a chest? Ugh. I'm tired. I'm not even probably gonna even say this guy- we'll speak this guy's nonsense. Uh. Have you heard about- uh, heard the one about the nun, the dragon, and the drunken penguin? Uh, I don't like where this is going. No? That's too bad, neither have I. Ugh. Just your- uh, Chuckles, you're about as fun- you're about as amusing as, like, I don't know, three dead rats. I mean, this is like, this is stuff that, like, five-year-olds would be amused by. I just said that. Oh, God. You just said that! Oh, no. Oh, God, we're gonna, oh, we're gonna get into an infinite loop here. Uh... Oh, he's no fun. I'll show you fun before I'm done? Ah, uh, okay, well... I did my best. Did I not? Uh, did I amuse you? If not, I hope I did confuse you. Did you enjoy my note? No. My jokes, not my notes. What? Really? I have to try harder then. Why is to pray like a horseshoe? It's because they both have the letter R in. The oh my God! Are you, are you getting me your your material from popsicle sticks? Well, who asked you anyway? <laughs> oh, that's right, I did. Nah. Hee hee ho ho, to spread good cheer I go. Come talk to me again, again, and I'll give you another show. Yeah, I'll talk to you again when, like, I feel when I'm, like, on my deathbed. <clears throat> uh, or something, I don't know. I'll talk to you when the heat, when the heat death of the universe comes around. Alright, now, do I have, um, any sacks I can put? Any empty s Uh, well, Dupre's got that bag full of money. We got that chest Shimino's holding on to. And Yolo's just got this bag of moo- uh, bag of food. Jeez, he should, I should put the- <laughs> Shimino. <clears throat> uh, just throw Yolo- throw Yolo the food and shove that in his sack. <clears throat> Honestly, Chuckles was far less harm, far less harmful than the Joker. 
It's just his jokes are bad, not the, all of him. The Joker will kill you physically. Chuckles will kill you with his jokes. Uh, what am I looking for? I'm trying to find a place to shove my shove all these potions. Come to think of it, who has? Oh, Dupre, you have uh, you have space here. You can hold on to these things. Just nice to won't miss these. Do I even need to? Ah, oh, you know what? Whatever. Just take them all. Shove them all in there. All in that sack. All right. Oh. You see a cute little mouse. Squeak! <laughs> Talking to a mouse, says Dupre. I think you're starting to imagine things. Yeah, you know what? Shut up. I do what I want. If I want to talk to a chair, I'll talk to a chair. I am Lord British's friend, Sherry. Do you have any cheese? Um, I think so. Do I? I don't know. I don't Ah, uh, nope, I don't. Eh, sorry. I'll get cheese at some point. Let's talk to back to Sherry again here. Squeak. Squirk? Squirk? Uh, okay. Squirk. <laughs> and British. He reads me bedtime, bedtime stories every night. Do you have any cheese? No. That's too bad. Well, I'll have to get some cheese at some point, kid. Uh... Okay. Searching here, you find nothing. Well, I can open the chest at the very least. Ah, and what's this? If you're looking for the clue, there's something for you under a plant in Serpent's Hold. Well, now I have to find the Serpent's Hold. I'm gonna have to take that letter, though. Now we yoink. And we got five gold. And my sack of axes. Sack of axes. Here, Dupre, you can have the gold, since you're a gold boy. And I'll take the wand. Okay. Do. And Chuckles went out of his way to put shit into a serpent's hold. I mean... Now get out of my way, man! Frickin' bother. Thank you. And... Bedroom. Oh, that's locked. I don't know where that goes. Um, I got this... Where's that key? Oh, here it is. Let's try that. No effect. Well, I mean, I was kind of far away. Eh. Right, now we need to load the portcullis. That's where the key comes into play. There we go. Alright. Boop. There we go. That opens the portcullis. Now I need to lower the drawbridge. Double click. Click. Uh... Did that just move steel door? I hope I'm not trying to actually move the steel door. Alright, there we go. Lowered that. And I'm just gonna case the joint. Oh, wait, you know what? Ugh. I'm gonna take a look at Nice Tool's magic ball there. Looky, looky. Uh, double click. Uh, use crystal ball, enter degrees, followed by north, south, east, or west. At latitude, uh, 50. Longitude, uh, 100. Great. Oh, well, no, never mind. Yeah, what? I don't think that really worked at all. Oh, never mind, then we'll just leave. Oh, and then there's this asshole. Hello, my good man. Hi. Oh, you know, I guess you're just some ding-dong on the road, and you know all about the word hi. Great, thanks. Oh, I know all about that, but I think you'd be better off if you learned about it on your own. Well, thanks. He glances around quickly to see if anyone seems to be listening. I'm Lord British, but don't tell anyone. I'm in disguise so I can mingle with the commoners. Uh-huh. Yeah, you are the spitting image of Lord British. Who I just literally talked to five minutes ago. I don't know who you think you're fooling, boy. Very convincing. Very convincing, don't you think? I made it myself. 
yeah, your raggedy green tunic and your shite ass bowl cut certainly uh, certainly makes it very convincing. Of course, no one would dare to say anything bad about me to my face. No one except Chuckles, anyway. But as a beggar, people will tell me just about anything. And what do you have to say about Chuckles? He's in disguise too, you know. He's really Blackthorn. Really? Wow. Uh. <laughs> Where are you getting all this info? I decided banishment was too harsh for him, so I brought him back and made him my jester. The real Chuckles is tied up in my dungeons. I got tired of him of him making fun of my nose. I got tired of him too. I'm Lord of British and I can do whatever the whatever I want to. Uh-huh. Sure. Uh if you need me later, I'll be at the blue bar disguised at the tavern as the tavern keeper, but I won't admit to it there if you ask me. Too many people that might hear. You see Shimino, Shimino smiling, an unusual sight. Noticing your attention, he says, Perhaps there is a little, little of Lord British in us all. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. And where are we here? <clears throat> Oi! Can I get some service here? Thank you. You see a sharply dressed, very voluptuous woman. <laughs> Hello, my name's Terry. I run the Mint. Say, aren't you the Avatar? Yes, I reckon you recognize you from your portrait. Oh yeah, my lame portrait. My mother used to tell me stories about you when I was a girl. Probably wouldn't remember her, but she was at the big celebration right after you recovered the Codex. Anyway, I wanted to tell you that I always hoped someday I'd meet a man like you. Whoa. By royal decree, I am the only one allowed to mint the official coinage of the realm. Copper pence, silver pieces, and gold crowns, they're all made right here. My father ran the mint before me, but I get lonely here sometimes. It's so nice of you to come by and talk to me. Uh... Kitten... Kitten? Kitten? Will never believe it when I tell her that I got to meet the Avatar in person. <laughs> Who is Kitten? She's a good friend of mine. She runs the museum. Yum. You should visit there sometime, but please stay and talk to me a little bit more. Oh man, she's really, she's crushing on you hard. She's crushing on Bill hard. Bill the tooth, master of toothpicks. I mean, you have to be dense not to read between the lines for her. With this. Avatar. You must be the bravest man I've ever met. I can't believe it's really you. <laughs> yeah, baby. Pence. Of course, I'm sure you only carry gold crowns with you being as important as you are. He reaches over and squeezes your shoulder affectionately. Oh, well, you're really laying it on thick, aren't you, girl? Well, let's talk about her da. May he rest in peace. Oh, okay, thanks. And gold. Britannia has been so prosperous lately, but there's a lot of demand for gold coinage. Of course, we have you to thanks for bringing the Codex and saving our British. I get most of my gold from people who bring in nuggets to exchange them for coins. Do you have any nuggets you'd like to trade in, trade in for crowns? I do. Normally, there's a 10% tax. But since you're the Avatar, I give you a full 100 crowns for every stone's weight of gold you have. Thanks! <laughs> she changes all of your gold nuggets for newly minted crowns. Bye. I know you're very busy saving Britannia and all, but I hope that you'll come and visit me again. Maybe you have time for it, I could show you more than a few silly coins. <laughs> she pinches you. Yeah, pinches me where? <laughs> oh, you know what? Um, at this point, I should probably save. Uh. There we go. Doot. Uh, okay, back to game. Donk. Now, the nice thing about Nuvi... I wonder if I can... Use new actor dolls. Uh, there might not be any custom ones for any custom, like, this stuff 
for Bill's uh, avatar, but... Uh, let's see. Well, uh, we know that I have to go to Cove. Do I have a map? No, that's move, thank you. I don't think I have a map. Uh, I might have to see if I see about getting one. Uh, don't want to move the door. Actually, you know what? I should check to make sure that I don't have hack move enabled. Mmm, I do. Don't want that. That's cheating cheaters! Okay, I want to make sure I don't accidentally quit. Don't want to accidentally move crap around when I'm trying to open things. You see a grunting and grumbling man with a large stomach. <clears throat> Hello. His breathing is quite heavy. What do you need? Uh... Where's... <laughs> Perhaps you could ask someone else. Ah, uh, whatever. Bye. Thanks. You're not... Glad you stopped by. He gives you a firm handshake. Alright. I don't know what the heck he even sells. Well, maybe if... Ah. Uh... Yep, yep, yep. Prompt. Torches, oils, torches, oil, gems, backpacks, bags, shovels, or powder kegs. Um, you know what? I get a backpack to put my axes in. Uh, give me a backpack. Costs more gold than you have. Eh. How much gold do I have? Well, I don't have any. He's got Dupre's got all the funds. Do I need to hold on to that crap? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna give it to myself. I don't know how much a backpack costs, but mm, maybe costs too much. I've got 120. A backpack can't cost that much. Okay, 10 gold for each backpack, just one. One backpack. There you go. Nothing. I'm sorry? Okay, well, I'm fine. Alright, now I've got a backpack I can put stuff into, like, uh, my axes. <laughs> Although, really, I'm gonna put that into the backpack. So I don't get it mixed up with my reagent bag, because there's really no way to tell the difference. I could put other things in this thing. Like, uh, I don't know. Probably put this on. There we go. Got that on amulet on. Uh, mm -hmm. uh has got his sword and main gauche. He's got his axes in that fat chest that I gave him. Eh, running into walls. What's in here? Mr. Boy, you're getting my way. What you doing? You see a muscular, well-armored guard. Hello, can I help you with something? Uh... Name? Not allowed to get that out of information. Uh, uh, whatever. See you later, shitlord. Ah! Uh, what is... I think this... Is this the mint? No, this is probably, like, something else. Mayor's place? Hey! See a preoccupied man holding a ledger under one arm. Records to keep, festivals to plan. I'm so busy, but I can spare you a moment, my lord. Uh, I am Solden von. I'm Fold Solden von von Basil. Ugh, God, that's a that name's a mouthful. Chancellor to Lord British. In my younger days, I was known as the Werecat of wine of the wine cellar. Uh, does that mean you drank a lot? I could tell you stories, but there's no time for that now. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure those some wild stories you got. You once drank an entire wine keg in one sitting. A fine ruler indeed. Tis a pleasure to keep his kingdom running smoothly for him. I already asked him his job. He's the chancellor. I don't think there's much to get out of him, so see you later, Thorlden. Ah, keep... Oh, man. And barge into somebody's house. No one's there. Yo, bitch, it's the Avatar. What you doing? Oh, uh, no one's home. You see a well-dressed man with a very even temper. 
Greetings, travelers, and welcome to the Wayfarer's Inn. I don't really need to sleep anywhere. No. I'm not interested in bed and breakfast. I mean, I just started on my adventure. Um, well, that's a sundial. Sundial. And a full group. And we're about midday here. And this might be the museum. Oh, yes. Look, thou dost see a pile of bones. It weighs 16 stones. Private property! Searching here, you find nothing. The bones of Zog. And then there's this thing. The perpetual motion machine. Yes, ain't that great. And... Left, the mystery fountain. Right, the energy field. And then there's a giant rock. A monolith. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we got, you know, the perpetual motion machine, a dude's skeleton, an egg, uh, parts of a dragon, a lightning field, a fountain from nowhere, and just a giant rock, you know, just, just a rock. That's interesting, ain't it? And back in here, we've got more doors. And we got these people sitting here. Ugh, do I even want to talk to them? She's a cute little girl with short hair. She don't look cute for that portrait. Ah. My parents told me to never talk to strangers. What's your name? Okay, now I can talk. <laughs> uh, what's your name? Curtsies gracefully. Ariana is my name? Uh, and what do you do? I'm learning to be a bard. I like to play the harpsichord. I like... I like to play the harpsichord best. Uh -huh. Bard. I want to be a bard when I grow up. They have more fun than anybody. Fun? Oh yes, lots of it. <laughs> yeah, no, when, no specific time about kind of fun. I've been studying to be a bard since I was this many. She holds up three fingers. So how old are you now? I'd like to play for some. I'd like to play something for you, but I'm not good enough yet. She looks away for a moment, then turns back to you, slightly blushing. Will you come back to hear my music when I'm older, if you can? Uh, you sure. The little girl's face breaks out into a smile bright enough to light up the whole room. Oh, jeez, turn that down! Really? I would like that very much. Yep. And talk to this person, who... Okay, hi. See a lively bard with laughter in his eyes. Welcome, my lord. I am Sir Kenneth, and I... I'd gladly play the... Play a song for thee. What kind of song? Kenneth plays a delightful little melody for you. Thanks. My wife and I teach young bars the arts of composition and performance and improvisa improvisation. Ugh. We also give concerts on occasion. Bards must be well versed in such matters. Eh, eh. Wife. Her name is Nan. Whatever you do, don't mention, don't say anything to her about spiders. Well, now that you've said that, I'm probably gonna. Spiders. She has quite an imagination. Sometimes she let it, lets it carry it, carry her away. Usually, it doesn't give her any trouble. Hmm. But her imagination of spiders, spies. And then there's presumably Nan. Who looks a little bit nervous. <laughs> Paranoid, yeah. I would play thee, play for thee, but I'm worried about my loot. Why? Eh, loot. Every time I pick up my loot, spiders cry all, crawl out of it. There must be hundreds of them nesting in there. Well then, get a fumigator. Fumigate that shit. I hate spiders. They're creepy, ugly, disgusting things. Why would they leave me alone? Yo says to her, now, now. My dear, have you forgotten about the gloves I gave you? Oh yes, perhaps if I wore those I could play. What gloves? Yolo gave me, uh, gave them to me for my birthday. Probably anti-spider gloves. Some like... Whatchamacallit, to make sure that, you know, some like, uh, totem that's like, yeah, wear those gloves and them spiders won't come out of your loot anymore. Fear the wear, watch thy steps. The spiders are looking everywhere. Yeah, well, I'm the Avatar. If there's any spiders step to me, I'm gonna slap them. Yeah, what, what have we got here, anyway? Look. 
dragon artifacts. It's a... It's a dragon. And an egg. Private property. Ugh. Accuracy. Alright, what's this way? It just leaves. Okay. Uh... Uh, what is that? Okay. <laughs> Hello. Oh, nobody home. I'm not rooting around in their chest because I'm the avatar. Don't steal from nobody, and I keep running into plants. That's my that's my ability. That's my curse. Running into everything. No matter what the game, I always manage to find the edges and run into them. Ah, well that one's magically locked. Let's get out of Shamino's inventory. What's in my spell book? No place to put. No, put in my. Uh, let me see, where am I going? Well, I know we need to go to Cove, but I need a map. So I know which direction it is, unless there's signs. Oh! Dang toot! So now I need to go back to Lord British, unless I can... Uh... I'm ready that. Ugh. Well, okay. Heal... Sure, heal myself. Hopefully that- nope. Yeah, I need to get back to Lord British to cure the dang poison, unless I have... Well, that- that's just- that just poisons me. I don't want to poison myself. Dang it. Now has the poison worn off, so I don't have to go- nope! Dang it! Arg. Ah! What's my hit points? 84. Boy, you never... better not. I think it may... no, it's still there. Talk to Lord British. Heal me, please. Thank you. Bye. So I'm not sick anymore. Yeah. Uh, that cheese. It is a cake. Sherry would not be. Oh, here's cheese. There's some cheese. And this is probably butter. Yeah, it's butter. You see cheese. I'm gonna just uh. Well, Laura Blair said I could take whatever, so I'll take that cheese. I'm gonna go find that mouse. <laughs> There's an ice stool. Ah! Move it! Where'd Sherry go? Oh, she's somewhere. Eh, let's unpick that. Thanks! It's not easy finding that little mouse thing, because it's just like, you know, Sprite's just like, really itty bitty. Chuckles! One of these days. Ah! Uh... I'm sure she's got to be around here somewhere. That's just somewhere I can't get to, which would be annoying. I can... Yeah, I can use the key. I can use the arrow keys. Nope. Oh yeah, it's starting to get dark. Ah, Sherry girl, where are you? British is there having dinner. Okay, well, I'm not having much luck, so 
I'm gonna run into these pillars a whole bunch first. And I think I'm gonna hit the hay here. Not usable. Oh, do I have to... Oh, that's right. I think I can't use beds in, in this. Can't you? I can't like actually sleep in a bed. I have to like camp, which is a little silly. But you know, this is kind of an old game, so they didn't really implement that kind of functionality yet. Only in the wilderness. Okay. Well, what what counts as wilderness? Here? Not where others are near. Okay. How many hours? Eh, eight. Cool guard. Mm, Depray. Because he's a swole boy. Stands guard while everyone has the snooze. And the moons fly overhead, and it's midnight. Great. <laughs> I'll camp again. Eight more. Tupperware once again. There we go. Now it's daytime. And I'm gonna whack these out of here. Broke the campfires. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go trundle on into the sewers because. Reasons. Yes. Because why not? Well, if I can... Arg. Man, I have no clue where that silly mouse is. Chuckles, what are you doing on the throne? Get off of there! Unless you're keeping the seat warm for Lord British. In which case, okay, but otherwise, eh, get a greasy butt off of there. Alright, well, let's see if I can't find a way down into the Sues. There we go. Down the ladder. Oh boy. Okay, uh, somebody's got to put a torch on. No free hand to hold the torch. Beautiful. Alright. And I've got that key. Unlock. Open that door. There we go. That goes further down. Oh, yay, rat. Goodbye. And who's this chucklehead? Oh. You see a, you see a skinny, awkward-looking man wearing boots that come up past his knees. Hey, hey, hey! Welcome to the finest sewers in Britannia. You look like you need a nickname, so I'll call you Ducks. Great. Thanks. Bill Ducks the Avatar. Name's Daros, old duck. He shakes her hand. Well, ducky, I keep the sewers running the way they should. When work is slow, sometimes I play a joke or two on my friends to keep things lively. Winks at you. Uh, what, what friends do you even have down here? Even though we don't know each other that well, I'd like to think of you as my friend already. Uh, joke? Oh, you know ducks, the usual kinds. He nudges you in the ribs. Um, what do you got to say about the sewers, buddy? Britain is the biggest city in the world, and all of those people use a lot of water. All the runoff drains down here. It's not a bad place to work, really, except for the rats. Oh, yeah, I mean... Go back up and have a look. I'm sure it's still there. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, the last time I checked. Grin's obviously delighted with its own sense of humor. <laughs> Probably smells his own farts, too. Water. Wouldn't go swimming around here, ducks. Uh, yeah, I'm sure... No. Rats. 
They're pretty big, Ducky, but not to worry. They usually won't eat you until after they've killed you first. Of course, if you have a set of pan pipes, I hear you can just pipe them away. <laughs> Do you have any pan pipes? I don't have a set myself. I usually just run. <laughs> yeah. It's real good exercise. Well, yeah, I'll exercise my way out of this conversation. See you around, old duck. He gives you a hardest slap on the back as you leave, which almost knocks one of the straps on your pack loose. <laughs> yeah, what do we got there? You see an open crate. There's nothing in it. Hooray. He's got a little pan there. Oh, is that a is that a chamber pot? No, it's a spittoon. Okay. Yeah. Barrels. Now, what is that? Stalagmite? Yeah, stalagmite. And there's just crates of nothing. Open sesame, close sesame. Uh, just empty open crates nobody cares about, and a bucket. Just a random bucket. Oh, unlocked. Okay, cool, thanks. And horseshoes. Just a bunch of horseshoes. 0.8 stones. Well, I don't have any need for horseshoes, unless I, unless I can break them down into... Hit the rat. Oh, well, that, that was over quickly. <laughs> I mean, it's just a little rat, so what do you expect? Eh, open that. What's up here? Now there's Sherry, goodness. Hiding around in here. Squeak. Cheese. Yes. Oh, he gave- that guy gave me a duck! I know I took the cheese, where did I put it? Where is that cheese? I know I took it. Oh, we ate the cheese, dang it! <laughs> oh! Darn, I'll have to find some cheese somewhere else. Oh well. Later, Cherry. Ah, more rats. This thing is prol prolific. Get out of here. Let's make it pop like a blood balloon. That's a cauldron. Talk to the cauldron. Look at the cauldron. Sixteen stones. Well, right. Mm -hmm. mm, more rats. Come here, chucklehead. Splat. Oh. Yeah, I want to do things. All right. Rat dead. Gotta get that XP, slapping little rats. I don't know how much I need to get to another level. Oh, here we go. What's in this crate? Nothing! And this one? What is this? Eight flasks of oil. Okay. Four stone. Now, uh, here, Shimino, you can hold on to these. Burp. Uh, cannon. And we're back over here. Alright. Back down into the grimy depths. Oh, I already I came from that way. I want to go this way. And there's a rat. Oh, down we go. And now we're getting nasty town here. Oh. Well, if we get that way, I'm not going to be able to do much with a, without a skiff. There's a bridge. Eh. Oh, what the heck? Evil mice! Kill him! Whack it! Get the mice. These are not nice mice. Get them rats! Smack the rat! Ah. Uh, 
got a torch on. Torch is lit. Okay, well, thanks. Eh, whatever. Rats! Get the rats! Get the mouse! Ah! And there's Shimino just flailing around behind me because I'm blocking the way. There we go. I think that's all of them. Yep. Phew, okay, well that was, um, interesting. It's funny that mice leave corpses, but not rats. You'd think that the mice would explode into little blood blobs. I don't even have anything. Nope. Not a thing. Oh, great, more mice. Oh, God, more mice and a bunch of rats. Okay, guys, let's do this. Ow. And... Out of range, thanks. They all dead? No one's in my way. There's something down here. No. More friends! Oh, a bunch of them. I need to wish I had a ranged weapon on board, but I'm kinda stuck holding my torch. Okay, I think we're in the clear. I check all these silly mice. Just in the vain hope that they have something. Ow, I'm poisoned! Dang it! That's a drawback with dealing with rats. I don't remember if poison... Oh. Oh boy, more. I don't remember if poison eventually abates or if I have to cure myself. Shimino's poison now, great. Probably gonna have to run back upstairs to say, hey, LB, give me some heals. Of course, then I have to find my way up. Oh, hell. Speak of the devil. Let's go. Ugh. Yeah. Oh. No way. Frickin' rats. Probably would be worthwhile to get cured up here, because... How's everyone doing? Eh. Only me and Shimino are poisoned. Ugh. Chuckles, would you get out of my way? Heal... Uh, laters. Um. Well, we didn't we got a fair sh fair amount of XP from that. So I think that was a nice little excursion down under. So. Oh, you know what? Where's that guard? Hey. Hey, boy. Cove. Eh. Well, you're no help. Yeah. Ugh. Wonder, does anyone know where Cove is? Hey, you. Hey, Peyton. Eh. Eh. Oh, this is a weapon shop. Oh wait, you know what? Do I still have that torch on? Yeah. Let's turn that out. <laughs> it still amuses me that that sewer guy gave me a rubber ducky. Rubber ducky, you're the one. Does it quack? <laughs> it does make a squeak! <laughs> oh, I love it. Where's Asky's ding-dongs? 
Ephraim. Eh. Bye. I need, need to talk to someone who knows something. Hey, lady. Oop, nope. Cancel. Talk. You see a petite woman with flowing brown hair. Yellow, and thy companions as well. Oh, what? Am I, what am I, chopped liver? I heard rumors that you were in town. Yellow greets his former apprentice warmly. How goes business, Gwyneth? Very well, very well indeed. Sir Joffrey himself just placed quite a large order. Much demand for bows these days, what with the gargoyles. Turn to you, Gwyneth says, and what can I do for Yellow's friends this fine afternoon? Gargoyles. I heard from the soldiers that the gargoyles are fierce opponents. Some gargoyles move like the wind itself and can strike like strike you like lightning bolts. Gargoyles have a strange and terrible weapon, which is it's is called a boomerang, and it's the most bizarre ranged weapon. Now you sell that to someone from Australia. It flies out to its target, to strike its target, and then returns to the hand that threw it. Against such a magic, the soldiers choose to arm themselves with good stout Britannian bows. Um, you know, uh, whatever. Farewell, all of you. Yolo, I'll see thee again soon with thy share of this month's profits. 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 God damn it! You again? Feck off! I'm busy. Now what? Eh. Eh. Yeah, you're just giving me the. Yeah, thanks. I don't want to talk to that Nimrod. Who are you? Oh, hey. See a mysterious gypsy woman wearing an Ankh pendant. You are the Avatar. I had a vision that you would come to seek aid from me. Mm. Some know me as Tanith. That is what you may call me. Tanith. What does that mean? Seek not my true name, but Tanith suffice. Okay. <laughs> Uh, when what do you do? I tell fortunes for a price. Yeah, everything has a price. Try six gold to cast my tiles. Are you interested? Yeah. From the folds of her cloak, she withdraws a velvet pouch. After shaking it gently, she casts forth three small squares of ivory, each with an image etched into its surface and a tile title at the bottom. The titles are. Abyss, Mountains, and Maelstrom. Oh joy. This is strange. The tiles show that to accomplish your ends, you must go down very far, then up very far, but you will not end up back where you started. What? The Maelstrom indicates something important as well, but I cannot determine what it means. If we consult the tiles another time, perhaps they will have more to say of your future. No, I already just did it. Bye. Our paths will cross again, I have foreseen it. I'm sure. Uh, everyone's just making merry out here. Well, you're certainly a sight better looking than Chuckles. See a slightly built gypsy lad. Good afternoon. I'm called Blaine. And... What is your... Who's your daddy and what does he do? I'm a juggler. I would fain join thee and go adventuring. And hey, juggle for me. No, juggle, not jubble. What is juggle? I charge five gold for juggling. Would you like to see some? Yeah, juggle it. Gypsy juggler takes three wands out of his knapsack and sets there in the fire. Tossing them into the air, he begins juggling. The pattern is elaborate, all almost hypnotic, as the tips of the wands describe great flaming art. Arcs and arps? <laughs> Great flaming arcs and spirals through the air. At regular intervals, he tosses one around behind his back. Yet somehow it always finds his way back into the pattern with the other two without missing a beat. At last, he catches all three of the wands in one hand, waves them with a great flourish, and bows deeply before you. As he extinguishes the wands, he said, I hope you enjoyed the show. I certainly did, boy. Uh, do you want me to come with you? Sure! <laughs> I look forward to the many adventures we shall we will share. And now I have another dude. And uh, speaking of this dude, what do you got on ya? You've just got five gold. Well, you know what? 
You know what, buddy? Here, you can have this boomerang. And I'm gonna duck out, go into my backpack, go into my bag of tricks. My tricks are axes. <laughs> and you can have a couple of those. Once we find you a proper sword... I'm gonna save. Yeah. Override. Back to game. Aha! Uh -huh. Alright. So now we've got uh, Blaine here. David Blaine. Is that another archery store? Ah! And who are you? Hello. You see a tall, willy woman with long blonde hair. How can I help you this fine afternoon? Lynn is your name. Thou needn't tell me thy, uh, thy name, Bill. The Avatar is famous throughout the land. I should hope so. Uh... What do you got? Uh... Nah. Not interested in really... money right now. You're a level 2. Everyone else is like level 3. We gotta get you swole up, boy. When we run to something more tougher than a that gaggle of rats. Hey, do you have cheese? See a short, dark man covered in white flour. And reflects in his portrait. Hello, my friends. As he shakes your hand enthusiastically, clouds of flour fly off his clothes. Now, I don't think we'll get any cheese here. This is a bread place. Uh, but I think I'll buy some loaves. Yeah, a bread. Those cost three gold each. How many do you want? Um, three gold. So if I buy three, that's six gold. Uh, I'll buy six. How's six? Here's that bread, Bill. How about anything else, Bill? Nah. Perhaps one of my friends? Nah. Zero. Bye. Okay, so now I got some bread to make sure we stay breaded. I need a bag. I can throw them into my backpack. There we go. Sweet. Alright. Out of the bread zone. Oh, apothecary. Graves! <laughs> uh, if I wanted to go grave digging, I would need a shovel. I know there was that one guy that sold shovels, but I don't know. I don't think I'm really interested in doing digging around in that crap yet. What you do? Rugged looking farmer lady. Welcome, friend. And I'm done talking to you already. <laughs> really small mountains. Blaine, I swear to god, if you got poisoned just by walking through that. Oh, dang, is it getting night? Oh, yeah, it is. And guardhouse. Probably have to find some place to camp. Oh, this is that place with that magic chest that might last chest. Okay, well... Uh, I think maybe right here will do. It'd be nice if I had a pocket watch so I could tell what time it is. Okay. I think right here should do. How many hours? Eh, eight. Let's put Shimino on guard duty this time. Bill has food. Everyone else has food. Shimino waits. Well, everyone snoozes. I'm gonna whack that. I'm going in circles here. Ah. What is this? A tree. It's a yeah, a tree. Right. Trees. 
This looks like a forge. Oh god, there's cannonballs back there. Great. Just what every little boy wants. An effing cannon. I mean, heck, if I get swole enough, I could carry a cannon around with me. But as it is, I've only got, like, 32 stones, and I've already, like, 10... And 10 away from that, so I have to watch my inventory there. I mean, the last thing I want is just, like, not have any room for anything. <laughs> Duck still amuses me. Oh, wait, here's signs. Oh, great, it's in Runic. Oh... Two... I, at least I think that's two. And if that's T, then that's... So then what's... This way might be Cove. Maybe? Well, great. I cannot read Runic, so I don't know which way's the right way, so I'm just gonna... Eeny, meeny, miny, mo this. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo well, okay, it's shoved more to the left, so that's where we're gonna go. Oop. Oof. Maybe. Uh, uh. Go back to the party view. We'll go that way eventually. In a bit. Is there someone I want to find first? There we are. You see a sleepy looking young lady. She yawns as you approach. Oh, hello there. I must have been daydreaming. Well, I have better dreams at night anyway. When, when the sun's blazing, I winks out. Winks shut, and Morpheus rules the heavens. Morpheus? Morpheus is the king of Slumberland. I think of the mo I think the moon is one of his daughters. It lies halfway between our fears and our desires. Our desires? Fear and desire. What would either be without the other? Uh, let us see, moon. She's the sweet harbinger of the night. Did I? I think I asked her. Right, my name is Nima. What's yours? That's nice. And what do you do? I tend Lori Bridge's orchard. Of course. This time of year, there's not much to do, so I take a lot of naps. To snooze. To snooze, perchance to dream. Oh, Morpheus, I long for taste of thy sweet oblivion. Okay. Oblivion. Sleep is the finest medicine, for in our dreams lie the answers to all the problems of the waking world. Whoops, that's not how you spell answers. Answers. Day brings questions, night brings answers. Blah! What the heck? Thusly, does the duality of the universe find expression in our li lives? Now, she's awfully, like, deep for someone who naps a lot. <laughs> oh, we already talked about that. What color is seven? How many is green? Could horses speak if they wished to? These things concern me. Concerned? She should be committed. We have better things to do than listen to this loon. You pray shut up. I happen to like this loon, so cram it. Long live the king. I was just a homeless orphan when he gave me this job. My parents were killed in an earthquake. But now I have a place to live and a job to put food on the table. Quake. The earthquake seemed to have stopped, thanks goodness. We haven't had one in well over a year now. Eh.
orchard. That's right. To provide fresh fruit for the Lord British's bouquet banquets. I thought bouquets no. All this talking is making me sleepy. She seems to have dozed off a furry. She even heard you say goodbye. <laughs> oh. She's my favorite character, honestly. Now oh, horsies! And I went over the fence. Okay. Look, thou dost see a horse. Well, yes. Can I talk to the horse? Funny, no response. Well, I wouldn't imagine so. Horses generally aren't known for their uh, conversational capabilities. Okay, so here we are back at these, so we're gonna head left. Actually, no, I'm gonna s do a cheeky save here. Alright. Just follow the path. Ah, what's this? Opened! It's somebody's house. Okay, well, whatever. Bye. Hmm? A cat. No response. I would expect it to at least say meow. Ah! Are you a gnat? Uh. You bad cat? You're bad cat. Bad cat. Naughty. Naughty cat. I hope you're not somebody's pet. Nah. Oh well. Sorry if that uh, if that if the person who lived in that house if that was your cat. My bad. It struck first. I guess I'm going down. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I can cross this. I don't need a boat. Oh jeez, you know what? I should have gotten a boat. Maybe I'll find a place with a boat. What's this? Probably a healer. Say talk. Oh god! You see a very large woman with a deliberate smile. That's her smiling? This is a smile? It looks like she's like... In the middle of a very boring lecture or something. Mm, yes? She looks down at you, her eyes merely slits. Uh, what's your name? Dizana, she smiles like a cat preparing for a meal. Oh dear. I can heal, cure, and even resurrect. Okay. That is correct. Now you're here to chat, or you need an, are you in need? Chat. Many words which travel about this small hamlet. Many are intriguing, some are even dangerous. What words have you heard? Uh... Those creatures are dangerous. I have heard they get to can tear a man to pieces. So why then did the gargoyles not attack Stivius as well? Certainly he would have tasted just as good. I'm sure you'd want to eat him. <laughs> Quaint little man, he has strong feelings for me. I must admit, he has a cute way about him. Return when you need healing. I, if I'm in the area and need it, I'll let you know. Hey. Hel you see a man bent over with age. An old brown tunic hangs, loose hangs loosely on him. He looks at you, then looks over his shoulder and shouts to someone behind him. There, I told you, Marta! New people, new food, and for our souls. He turns back to you. Welcome to the Haunting Inn. Come and sit for you must have many tales. Uh, tales. Yes, let us swap a story for a while. Oh. I. The name used to just be words. But now, with Marta saw. She hasn't come out of that room since she saw that darn ghost in the dining room a few nights ago. She told me the lanterns went out, and a specter drifted in front of her. She had such a scream that I heard her from the mar heard her from her bedroom. He shakes his head and glances at the room behind him. Scream. 
My mother doesn't spook you that easy. After all, she woke up. She's woken up next to me all these years. <laughs> At first, I thought maybe I should lock the cupboard where we keep the wine. But I don't think my mother's been nipping. I wish I knew what she saw. If you've never had stivious wine, you're in for a treat. Is that you? He lives next door, strange fellow. I think he sampled too much of his own wares. Right. Well, see you later. So, let's see. Oh, who's this? Yo. See a tall, rather well-dressed man with a wilted smile. Eh, you've seen better days, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, it's reaching over and removing something invisible from your shoulder. Uh, did you just flick off a pe- uh, thanks. Dusting off- dusting me off. He sniffs the air as if smelling something bad. Oh, you're one of these people. I am, of course, Trenton Bell the Mayor. You may call me Your Honor. Bitch, I'm the Avatar. I'll call you, I don't know, Trench. Use my title. Okay. Job, I do not labor like these others. Eh, labor. I don't like you already. You know, rigging the masts or swabbing the decks. Eh. You aren't much of a sailor, are you? Yarl and that young Delancey girl can tell you about that. Alright, well, I'm done. You're just a douche, so we can... I'm not gonna waste my time with you. Oh, that's the mayor's house. Oh, okay. Uh... You see a huge, imposing man adorned in a leather apron. Good morning, friend. He extends a huge hand which resembles a slab of meat. What do you need? Yorl. Short name, but a strong one. Strong. My father was a coastal raider, but don't let no, don't let that out. He lets, uh, lets out a holler and laughs loudly. Yes, I had one. He hollers again, this time slapping you on the back. Eh. <laughs> raider. He suddenly stops laughing and looks at you, his eyes wide and angry. Who told you? With that, he throws his head back and laughs again. <laughs> I'm a fisherman. This isn't quite as exciting as some jobs that keep me near the sea. Oh, I, I love the sea, I do. Even if the fishing's been a bit poor of late. Fish come, fish go. Right now, the fish are gone. But they'll be come back. When I do, when they do, I'll be waiting for them with my nets. Nets. Now you have to use nets to do some serious fishing. A pole? A pole will never catch you enough to sell. Never use it myself. It's stick to nets. Faster and easier. Man's gotta make a living. Can I buy anything for me? Eh. Nah. I know I do need to at some point get a skiff. A tall, delicate-looking female. Her smile puts you at ease. Hello, my lord. Welcome to my home. Her eyes are as blue as the ocean, and her movements are as rhythmic as the tide. What can I do for you? Father chose an ancient name, ancient word for my name, Marnie. It means the cool breeze after a storm has passed. It is in a poem my mother wrote for him when they first met. She grabs a locket that hangs around her neck and opens it. Inside is a piece of f inside is a folded piece of cloth with words printed on it. She begins to read. At first we met and dark clouds gathered, the thunder sounding your approach. Then comes the storm of our hearts pounding in the end the Marnie's touch. Uh, mother gave me this just before she was taken by those evil men. My father, uh, my mother told me to give it to her, give it to father when he returned from the sea. Yor gave it back to me after he was killed. Oh man, life's just dealing you some really bad hands here, lady. I mean, your mama got kidnapped, and then your dad got beefed by a storm or something. 
She rubs her nose with the knuckle of her hand. I cannot see how Edo's beast would, would kill him, but perhaps they're just unfortunate. Still, I can't see why he was set at the inn that time that late. Had he been had he been drinking, Yorl would have been with him. Hmm. My father had gone out to help Yorl bring in the catch that afternoon. Are we oh, Yorl. She smiles to herself. He and father were never apart. After my mother was kidnapped, Yorl helped my father get back on his feet. They're always together. Her gaze returns to you. If my father had been drinking at the inn, Yorl would have been there. Alright, well... I'm sorry that I wept. It's not your fault. Well, I'm gonna go... to visit the Yorl here. <laughs> Rumbles up to you with a large bloody hook. Stick that in me, bro. Loveliest thing ever seen in these parts? I'm her father now. <laughs> and if any man should want her hand, he'd better be able to take me square. Well, yeah, let me just go on about that. Strange little guy. They say he's the only one who saw Quen murdered. I wish he'd had a better witness. He flips the hook over and flips the hook over exam and he flips the hook over and over, examining it. Still, those gargoyles would frighten any man. Especially one as small as him. Pauses for a moment and looks distantly past your shoulder. He and I were mates. I can still remember the moment they told me he was dead. He swallows hard and his eyes become glassy. I miss old Quinn. Who's they? Gideon and Stivius. They came to my house before dawn and told me that Quinn had been killed by gargoyles. This guy, Gideon. Never seen one. Seen a lot of things. Uh, let's see, serpents as big as the big of the biggest four master. But nary a single gargoyle. No, oh, there's Gideon. He owns the haunting inn. He's good people, though his wife is a bit of a nag. Waif now, wife, please. She always complains that my house is an eyesore. I tell you, if she comes around here, I'll show you what an ISO really is. He slaps you on the back and laughs. This is a fish house. It's meant to be an eyesore. <laughs> hmm, okay. Well, Gideon and Stivius. Let's see if we can talk to... Somebody. No, there's nobody here. This is the inn. There's Gideon. Is that your bell? We came to this island many years ago. As children, we'd take the boats and race around the point. Martin and I took care of him when Mondane Sensman killed his wife Elizabeth. We care for his daughter, Marn, now. She's such a brave girl. He pauses for a moment, then continues. Neither I nor the traveler staying here heard anything the night he was killed. Yes, Clinton and Yarl were out fishing when a few of those evil ones landed here. They were fleeing Lord British's men and apparently thought our hamlet was safe haven. They went around asking for some person named Relthor, Renthar, or something like that. We know such person in this town, not by that name. Travelers. Questioned about the night of the murder. 
Still, all of us, my Marta and I, had the best vantage point from which to witness or even hear the murder. Yet we saw, no saw and heard nothing. Uh, let's see what he says about... Killed. Looks at you a moment and leans closer. They say Quentin was killed by a gargoyle. I've heard these beasts eat their prey. Why did they leave Quentin alone then? Yeah, I agree, Gideon. It's not, I'm smelling something real fishy, and it ain't Yorl. I don't think there's anything else I can... And... And there's his kooky wife. Oh, okay. So you're a rather plump woman with darting eyes. Hello, how are you this morning? What is it that you need? Eh. Talk about ghosts. It was the scariest thing I ever saw, and shirts sure, still lurking about somewhere. Eh. Well, you ain't got much to say, except being weird about ghosts. I suppose we can see if we can find the stiviest guy. Oh, here we are. You see a tiny little man with wild eyes. Yeah, okay, yeah. He looks you up and down and claps his hands together. Yeah, okay, yeah. What can I do for you? Stivius, the wine merchant is mine. Okay. He was a nice enough soul. I sold him many bottles to him. It was late one night, and I had just returned from my fields. Of course, my path takes me right by Gideon's garden. I heard a noise by the well and saw some dark forms hunched there. They had huge wings and evil red eyes. I ran like the wind to my doorway. I sure was dead. Noise. A strange whispering in a tongue I could not understand. Didn't sound like any language I ever heard. More like one of them langu- gi- More like one of them guild languages. Guild languages. Like the one the alchemist speaks. Alchemist? Go ask old Horence. He can tell you if you can understand him. Oh boy. He lives- He lives over on Ivers, rounding by himself. Must be new to this village. Go see Marnie, she'll get you there. Alright. Eh, evil. Gargoyles, they were. Must have been like 10 or 12 of them. No, perhaps more like 2 or 3. Didn't stay around and count, yeah. Captain Exaggeration. Eh. Oh, okay, well, we already asked him about that. Gideon? Gideon runs to Haunting Inn, yeah. His wife has a garden, which you can see from my front door. Well, let's see if we can find old Horrence here. I'll ask uh, Marnie about him. No, that's the peering lady. <laughs> Horrence. Ah, uh, now, Horace is much wiser than most know. He is also my mentor when it comes to poetry. He has a way of reminding me that I am too concerned with myself. It is a gentle way, but a firm reminder. Mm. Mm. Oh. Yeah, see you later, lady. Let's see if I can find your, uh... Poetry guy. Mr. Poet. Oh, I could probably load myself into Skiff. Ah, here we go. Ah, God, there's bats everywhere. Hopefully, they're nice bats. Oh, hi. See a bent aging man with a scraggly beard and few teeth. Dogs are at my footstep, yapping at my heels. No way to ignore them, just pretend that they are eels. Oh, thanks. 
Ask about a traitor, ask about a love, and if you are creative, ask about the dove. Uh, and I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> ah! Phew. Here you have a question, I'm here to answer some. If I make suggestions, please. <laughs> Love has many rivers, yet grief can twist them all. Be guided by your wisdom, and you'll achieve the goal. Simple has its moment, and often is received. Much better than the brilliant, who often will deceive. Hmm. There's probably something... Oh yeah, he's just selling that stuff. Nah. I see that they are going. I'm sure they will return. For if they lack the knowing, they'll always need to learn. Well, yeah, see you later. What are you guys doing looking around over there? There we go. any bit any of the reasonable and gives us any reasonable results well got ourselves a little murder mystery here that we're trying to work out uh, I hate to talk to Trenton here but we were not friends not good friends that is he resented my position Yes, well, as mayor, I am the shepherd of the spiritual people of this hamlet. Uh-huh. We do not believe in violence as a solution to our problems. My flock would not fight against anyone. Therefore, I am alarmed at the recent gargoyle sightings. Huge, fierce creatures they are. Quentin didn't even have time to scream before one of those beasts had killed him. Eh. Many believed he, if he had screamed, someone in the inn would have heard him. Right. Yeah, something ain't... Something's... Something's weird. Something ain't going right here. Something's fishy. Wishy fishy. Ugh. <laughs> Ag. Uh, Wait, hang on. What was that? Who are you? Oh, dang. Ghost in the ghost in the grave, uh, not in the graveyard. He's yakking around in the wine, the grapes. You see a vaporous form hovering before you. The form is that of a man. His mouth moves, yet no word can be no words can be heard. Hmm. You hear no answer save the rustle of the leaves on the ground around you. You speak the word, and the specter responds by pointing. A bony hand to his eye. Wind from behind blows your hair, covering your eyes. I think he means he didn't see who did it. But I'm not sure if we're going to get more out of him. Cool breeze blows through your hair. You suddenly smell the scent of a storm approaching. No. Oh. A strong breeze suddenly assaults you with <laughs> Great. And someone's like, looks like right here. Mastivious. It's not a tale you've, just a tale you've been hearing. Everyone knows that Quentin haunts this town. If I had been murdered by those evil ones, but that's just gossip. Yeah, that's that whole nonsense. Well, I'm not gonna get much else out of them. 
I need, I, in order to talk to Quentin more thoroughly, I need something I don't currently have. But, I'm gonna save here, and I believe that should be it for this, uh, it for today, so thanks for joining me on this, uh, the beginning of this little excursion into Ultima. Um, I don't know when exactly I'll get back to this, I'm thinking maybe next Friday or something, but we'll see what happens. So, either way, thanks for joining me, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed uh, looking into what really kind of started Artifacts of Ultima in a way, because if it wasn't, if I hadn't started playing, if I hadn't played this game when I was a kid, then it wouldn't have kickstarted, wouldn't have meant my, wouldn't have really... It wouldn't have started the love I have for this series, and ultimately led to make me making the mod as just like a... I'm not finding the words right now. <laughs> but it's because of how much I love this series that I made the mod in the first place. So, but either way, thanks for joining me, and join me next time for when we continue on, and maybe see if we can figure out what happened to Quentin and whatever. So, catch you next time. Oops.